appoint the supervisor, so. Okay. Well. It's the same one as last time. He said you're not doing anything wrong except for the air horn. They yeah. already took me to court for using the mega. Oh, and yes. The judge already did me this case. Yeah, that's right. So it's, somebody's lying here. Yeah. Or the judge is wrong or they're lying. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to wait for him to show me this document. Okay. So, Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household shall be saved. Book of Acts, chapter 17. It's calling all men to repent everywhere. So today, right here in Blacksburg, Virginia, God is calling you to repent. But continue with the Bible study with your started. If you still have your Bible open on the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse number 8, Jesus Christ is asking his disciples, will the Son of Man find faith on this planet when he comes back for his people. What do you think God will find today in America if he comes back for his people? He will find a bunch of people afraid of a virus, afraid to lose their lives, neither because you're still a sinner and you know that if you die, you're gonna burn in hell. Because if you Blacksburg. were afraid with God, you're Farmer's not afraid market. of dying because you know where you're going. There's only two destinations for your soul. It's either heaven or hell. Here he comes. How do you make it to heaven? It is through repentance. It is through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of lords, and he deserves to be honored and glorified. He's the only one. But you give glory to politicians. You give glory to sports. You give glory to everything but the Lord Jesus Christ who died in the cross for you 2,000 years ago. Okay. So blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Hi. Jesus Christ. How you doing, Lieutenant? How are you doing? Doing good. How are you? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. I remember I spoke to you yes, I remember two before. years ago, and yep. the city lawyer was with you. Oh, we know. You're, you're not doing anything wrong. Right. But you understand people are going to call us, right? Yeah. I don't understand I'm on the public sidewalk. Do you understand that people are going to call us though? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know whether you were doing anything. I can't understand you, William. I know. I know. <laughs> you're actually supposed to be wearing a mask. There's a mask mandate. Uh, no, sir. I, I, don't don't have have to, I, don't, I don't have to wear a mask. According to the town code. Is that a crime? I'm coming out crime if I don't wear a mask? Yes. What will be my crime? I'm not obeying the mask mandate. We can't. Can I put me in jail for that? Huh? You're going to put me in jail for that? No, the worst would be like a ticket. I was just asking. If I must do that, how am I going to speak when I'm preaching? How am I going to speak when I'm preaching? You know, people eating and they and they don't have a mask. Now, later, excuse right. me, you're going to get a citation, you don't have a right. mask. Right. <laughs> You'd have to write a bunch of people a citation today. We, we, we already <laughs> went to position. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. But the only thing I want to ask you is this. The, the last time I talked to you, you were with the city lawyer on the festival. Yeah. And I have a big email from the list. Yes. And they let me use it with yeah. no problem after I showed them this wear, letter. He wasn't aware of the religious exemption. That's why he initially came up with you. He didn't okay. realize that change. Okay. Well, he's, he's, a, not, he's, he's a human being. You understand? No, that's okay. That's why, that's right. why, I, that's why I said let me talk to you. So what yeah. do you think you're from Jerusalem? I'm not. I just, I just would like to continue freedom of speech without harassment. And every time I come to Blacksburg, they always come from the trying to stop why, why do they come? Probably the casinos call. Because people. Yeah, the casinos call. Oh, do, like, do we have this house? I don't know what he had. Because I call the police sometimes and they never show up. Don't call us. No, we're not. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm in different departments. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to be cool here. I'm trying to be cool to you. We're not so, trying to call an issue with you. I'm not. I'm just going to let you speak. But just be aware, please, that when you come out here and you start, especially when you start using an, an amplified equipment, mm -hmm. people are, are going to call because they can't sit next to their friends and talk about here. And I, well, I have to talk over top of them. Well, I have a question. It's not, it's not correct. 
I don't want to stop. Why don't you tell them when they call that you have a right? To, then you check it out and see we what's do, going because, on. Because after I leave, uh-huh. they're going to keep calling. They're uh, going to keep calling. And they're going to keep calling. And they're going to keep calling. And they're going to keep calling. Do you understand? Yeah. It jams with our phone line. Yeah. And we can't we can't do normal business work because we're getting nonstop phone calls. Look out here with the megaphone. Blah, blah, blah. Like, yes, you know. Can I stop every single person from getting on the phone and dialing? No, the no, but you, you know, when, it's, it's when he has a, when he has a, a you know, it's, machine it's, gun, call me. It's, 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 he not, the it's not illegal, but you understand it's not yeah. courteous? <clears throat> and that's, what, that's, that's probably what gets people more upset than what your message is. Well, about. Jesus because wasn't courteous. He preached. Trying, and they're trying to, to talk about whatever, and they're trying to shout over top of your amplifier. Right? Uh-huh. That's why, they, that's probably more reason why they call us to whatever you message. And I'm sorry if I came too harsh on you. No. I'm, I'm glad that you came. That you're the one that came. We, we have dealt with you before. Okay. We, we have reached an understanding. We can be civil. Yes, Not sir. every single officer of my ship has had to deal with this situation, has had yes, to deal sir. with this thing. And you understand, our, our code book is like this thick. Yes, sir. And to understand and remember, every single little minor detail is, is sometimes a little Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, when we leave, I guarantee you. Will keep but not not to be confrontational or anything. But the First Amendment is one thing that they probably should understand in right. full. Right. Yeah. And you think I'm not gonna get to pay? I'm probably gonna get just 30 more minutes. And I'm, so you're only gonna get close 30 more minutes. And I'm gonna remain on the public sidewalk. I'm not gonna go in there. So. That's a sad state of things, though, when people call for righteousness and they they overlook when yeah. a guy's getting high yeah. on the is corner the or something the the same as yours? well there's only one true god in your opinion what's the first that's not my, well well yeah anybody can preach anything they want to yeah and they don't have to believe your message right they don't nobody's forced to believe anything no but we have we have we are compelled and, and commanded to go out and preach and, 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 and i get that, mm-hmm. I get that. so we have to do that and all hopefully all we ask is try to be a little courteous uh-huh. And it, and uh, we don't really. Bless it, bless it. I'm gonna turn it down. Bless it, bless it. Well, I have extreme Lord. asthma. I can't wear those things. Yeah. And Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is King of Kings. Yeah, we're courteous. Lord of Lords. I mean, this is the greatest courtesy we can give is, is to let people know the truth before it's too late. There's Especially if there's people dying of COVID, they need to know this. To the ordinary supply to Virginia for the use of the megaphone. All right. All right. We're going to continue using the megaphone. Thank you. Please don't call the police because they're busy doing police work. Have a good day. Yep. I'm only going to be here 20 more minutes and I'll leave you alone. I'm going to leave this message. So the Bible says in the book of the chapter 18, verse number 8, as I was talking earlier to you. Jesus Christ is asking his disciples, will the Son of Man find faith on the air when he comes back? And that was my question. Why will the Son of Man will find today in America if he comes back? I tell you, he will find abortion is legal in America. He will find homosexuality is legal in America. He will find all kinds of sinful activities legal in America. As I was saying earlier, we live in a worse times than Noah in the flood. Because in the days of Noah, they did not legalize all these sins. But in 2021, all these sins are legal in America. So we are here telling you what the Bible says about sin. God hates sin, but he loves righteousness. All unrighteous is sin. So today is the day of salvation. You might not have tomorrow. That's why we're here. Because today you're running out of time. Today is the day when you got to repent of your sin, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, turn back to God with all fasting, crying, and supplication. The Lord Jesus Christ died for you 2,000 years ago. He deserves to be honored and glorified. His name is Jesus Christ, the true God is Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. All unrighteousness is sin. If you 
very wrong, that's a sin. If you're a liar, that is a sin. If you like gambling, that is sin. If you enjoy abortion, or you take part in abortion, or you support abortion, that is sin. If you support homosexuality, that is sin. God hates sin. That is one thing that I would like for you to keep with you mind today and meditate on that. God hates sin and all sinners they have one destination and that is hell. So today how can you avoid hell is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His name deserves to be honored and glorified. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the Bible, verse 20 and verse 20, says, Surely I come quickly, and my reward is with me to repay those according to their works. Faith without works is dead. Bible says, Bible talks. What are you doing if you call yourself Christian, baby? But what are you doing for the gospel? Are you preaching the gospel? Or are you just shaking your head no when you see a preacher on the street preaching the gospel? The gospel must be preached. Paul tells Timothy, until I come, read the scriptures in public. Right now, the spirit of God lived by voice with the government and show my people the transgression in the house of Jacob. Yes. Often, God sent his prophet Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. He tells Ezekiel in chapter 2, he said, I'm sending you to a rebellious nation to the children of Israel, a nation that rebelled against me. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10, he cries out and says, Lord, where should I speak and who should I give a warning? Their ears are closed, they don't hear, their pure word is a reproach, it's offensive. They don't find the light in the scriptures. Do you find the light in the Bible? Are you called the police? Are your ears close to the Bible? Huh? Are your ears open to the gospel? Your ears are open to hear the LGBT community demands. Your ears are open to hear about how women try. They can't. They want the right to kill their babies in the world, but are your ears open to what the Bible says? Thou shalt not murder, mothers, women. Stop having relations before marriage. Please said I was fine. I was just talking to them. Okay. Thank you.
some friends here, and they haven't gone cave and immunocompromised, and this is one of the safest places. I am too. Possible. That's why I can't wear that. Yeah, could you just cover your mouth and just like not your nose? So you can no, I'm off? not gonna put that thing on me. I'm sorry. I won't go near their kid. I promise. <laughs>
Disney had movies with lesbians in it, homosexuality, and they sell it to kids, and you have no problem with that. But, you, but this, you think, is too offensive to little kids. I think so, again, I think it's like the parents should be teaching their children. They should be teaching them now and telling them, like, oh, maybe, like, maybe not this movie because of you know, violence. The homosexuality. So, yeah. Correct. It's up to parents to raise the, to raise the children in the ways of the Lord. Also, by the way, if do it long term. So, um, the the most abortions being to save a life. That's not true. Most abortions are out of convenience. I know because I was there once in that situation. You don't realize you're putting farmers out of business. I'm talking to. I'm not doing anything. I'm talking to him. Uh, <laughs> So, so basically, you might there might be one or two out of thousands that are that way, but it's not most. So please, please do your research on that. I'm sure you're a doctor too, but you're very. No, I'm at the abortion clinics every day. I know. <laughs> well, I won't be well, not quite every day. Many days of the week. Awareness, awareness to people about this image. I'm going to continue preaching. I'm trying to not talk to you anymore. You can talk to my wife, but she, she can answer oh, all your questions. Hi. Right hi. So, How are you? Blessed, blessed That's be Malachi. the name. That's a real baby, by the oh, way. She can tell you the story of this baby. Blessed, blessed be the name the other side of the Lord and Savior. Uh, so Jesus you're more, Christ. it's the visual so that you don't like. This right here yeah, is what an abortion looks like. I totally fine with the whole thing. If any of you young ladies are trying to consider the option of an abortion, and this I, I right here is what an abortion really looks like. like. But I do Don't a, do it. Don't do it. And I understand. I was saying, that shall not murder. That shall not murder. I understand. You know, it's, you, want, you want people to be aware of the, of the horrific of the of it. Mm -hmm. And that's fair. No. And people are very far removed from that. I just feel Satan like it's a, it's a very kill, intense, like, you know, way. Especially when it's But we've done it all the other ways and it doesn't make an impact and the culture today is being very intense on young people in many other ways they're seeing so many things they shouldn't see uh, you know in, the, in public and things so this is not this is reality you know what I mean and I didn't know that when I was growing up I don't know about you but I grew up and well I grew up way before you did in the 80s I uh, you know all we knew was that was fetal tissue there was no life and people are taught it's like cells yeah we were taught that and when I got pregnant at 19 out of wedlock um, I wasn't saved at the time obviously and I went to the abortion clinic and I was going to make an appointment. And there was a lady out there with a sign like that. And it stopped me in my tracks. And I talked to her. And she took me to her office and showed me the abortion procedure on a video. Back then we had videotapes. <laughs> she made me watch it. And I watched it. And it saved my son's life. 
and now he's 33 years old. He's been to Afghanistan. He's, you know, he's, 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 he's in the military. Yeah, not anymore. He was, and uh, he, but, but he was the reason that I got saved because I wanted to be a better mother for him. So I went to church. I probably never would have found God without him. You know what I mean? But I almost murdered my blessing. And so I feel compelled to do the same thing. And we go to abortion clinics and do this and stuff. But then we realize, you know, it, we got to get to the people before they get to the abortion clinic. And let them know that and before they're old enough to have sexual relations outside of marriage. You know what I mean? Look, this is where it can end up. You know, and then you become a murderer. You don't just become a fornicator. Then you become a murderer. Then you have that to live with the rest of your life. You know what I mean? And so... It makes an impact, yes, and some parents don't like it. They want to hide them kids from from all these things, but yet they see they let them watch the news with them. Yeah, you know it's, what I mean. It's the same thing with like, you know, I would not let my child watch a movie that I think is violent. Right. It's the same thing where it's like, if I go to the car and talk to the kid, and it's like. But you you seem like a kind of a moral person compared to this culture today. Do you see what I'm saying? Why? It might be offensive to you to see that because it is in your face and you know that there's children here. So it's probably not bother you, but it bothers you. No, it definitely bothers you. Yeah, it bothers you, but I mean, it doesn't... I hope you don't... I'm a pretty sensitive person. Yeah. So, like, it, it's pretty, like, it is, you're right, like, it's a child's life, it's sad to see. Uh -huh. It is very sad to see. And that's exactly what it should do. But sadly, for most people, they're like... I feel like most people see it and, and they, they, already, they feel like they know what your message is going to be, especially if you're like yelling at them, uh -huh. and then they just shut down, and that's when people are like giving them the so. Yeah, well, he's just raising his voice to be heard. He's not really yelling at them. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just has a voice like that. Yeah. I, so, a booming voice. Yeah. I just think a lot of people, you know, I actually, I'm a missionary on campus, actually. Okay. Like, that's my job. Um, and a lot of people. That's a big job here. <laughs> I think a lot of people think, oh, I, I know, I know, I know. Just think, you know, oh, oh, you're intolerant. Oh, you're going to hate me. Oh, you don't like this. But it's like, right. Like, I do want to stand for morality. Uh -huh. But I don't want to hurt my witness before I meet a person. You know, so, like, I want to be able to, like, show them God's, God's love for them, right? Because everyone, like, the Lord has such a intense love for every single person. Including like babies. Or their soul, yeah. yes. Yeah. He wants to see their soul saved. Yeah. They don't want anybody to perish. That's right. Yeah. And it's just like when, like, so if I were to like go to a party or something and, or stand outside of a party and just talk about, you know, like drunkenness and how it goes against the Lord, everyone in the party is going to be like, well, I don't care. You know, they, they say things like, you know, like, oh, I guess I'll just go to hell. What if that one person? gets your message and doesn't get drunk and get killed that night. Right. You know what I mean? I just feel like, you know, there's like a ton of people and it's like, so we do things. We talk to people, we have like, you know, boards, we're like, what are your thoughts on like... So are you saying that this approach is not, you don't think is, is worthwhile? I think it just hurts. I think basically maybe one person would respond. But I, think, I think most people would just say, oh, there's another reason why I hate Christians. You know? Well, that's okay because you know what the Lord did? He did the same thing. He, he said they're like, going to hate you because they hated me. Right. Yeah. So here's the other thing. In Jude, it says, you know, um, that we, for, for some, we have to uh, be compassionate and, and make a difference. And others... We have to hate the sin, the garment of sin, and we have to, you know, basically be like this. So there's different methods that God used, and Jesus used different ways to heal people. He used different ways to, you know, tell them to stop their sin and, and follow him. Um, and so there's all kinds of methods. And so we, we're also missionaries. We do Honduras and Mexico and, uh, and McDowell County in West Virginia. So we, we also have that compassionate making a different side. But here in Blacksburg, we used to stand at the abortion clinic all the time and preach over there until it got closed down. Um, and that's basically what we're doing now. We know here is a very liberal the campus. It's a very liberal place. And so when we come here and preach, we preach harder because that's what the way the way the Lord sends us here. And there's so much sin here, and people are just so dead to that. You know, their their the conscience is seared. They need to be woken up. They've already been loved. They're drowning in God's love. Now they need a hard word, and that that's just where we're at in some of these places, you know. And you on campus, you're making relationships. You're there every day. You can work. We come, we go. We come, you know. We're in this city, then we're in that city, then we're in this city. 
So we come with a hard word and then we're gone. And then when somebody hits hard times, that hard word will be what they remember. You know what I mean? When they're sitting in a jail cell or, or they just got in a wreck and they almost died or something. They'll say, hey, I remember that guy, that crazy guy on the Mexican on the corner. He was talking about how I should really, you know, quit drinking and, and quit sinning and, and turn to the Lord. Maybe this is the time, you know. And we get those stories. Some of them we hear, some of them we never hear. But I know that in heaven we'll hear them, you know what I mean? And then when it's time to be compassionate, the, the Holy Spirit tells us that, you know. It's time, this is, these are people who have not heard the gospel before. Go with love, bring them what they need, you know, supply their needs, love on them, and tell them the gospel. So we have to use whatever the, the Spirit leads us, you know, how He leads us in a certain place, certain situation. And this place is wicked. And I'm very refreshed to see a young lady who loves the Lord and is willing to reach souls. That's wonderful. That sign is rough, and it's very rough, but that's not the... We have other signs that are rough, but they're not um, so graphic as this one. You know what I mean? They're more like the sin is there, you know, like drunkenness and da 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 da, -da. So... Well, they they might at the time because they're doing other things they don't want to be bothered. Or they may be in the middle of the sin if we're at a drunk fest or something, you know, where they're getting drunk on um, Pat, St. Patty's Day or something. But it's, it's later, in the dark times, in the alone times, that they remember this. You know what I mean? They'll also remember your way if you are able to touch them. But you're only able to deal with, give that compassion, love, kindness, softness in increments to certain people. You can't do it to everybody here right now. You know what I mean? So we only have a short time. He's going to give that message to everybody here right now. And it's going to stay right there in the back of their mind somewhere because the Lord will bring it to their mind when they need it. You know, when they're willing, when they're open to it. So it works. It works. And it's not, it's not the popular way to do it. <laughs> but Christ will use anything that is legal you know he will he, well if the gospel becomes illegal in this country we're going to do that too so yeah. also, I just think about, you know, like, he, when Jesus found them and caught an adultery, mm -hmm. there was a huge crowd there. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to show you that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he was compassionate to her. But look what he did. He said, go and sin no more. And he and, and he said, any one of you who have not sinned, cast the first stone. He put all those people to shame right there. All those men, I should say, to shame. And they had to leave. So that wasn't compassionate. He was compassionate toward her because she was the one that was being pointed out by all the hypocrites. Right? Because somebody committed adultery with her. Right. Which one was it? Yeah. And they were supposed to be <laughs> Yeah. No, but where's your where's your accusers? Right? And she's like, well, they're gone, Lord. And he said, now go and sin no more. Don't do this no more. This is sin. You know, he did say that. He didn't say, oh, it's okay if you sin some more. No. He said, go and sin no more. Now that you see what could have happened to you, and that grace saved you, don't follow in that sin anymore. Leave it behind you know and that's that's the message basically that we preach everywhere is that there is no there are people who think that they're saved and they still live wallowing in sin that's a reproach on christ you know um how can you do that and love him you know because this doesn't make sense that's not a fruit of salvation that's a fruit of of you're still in yourself, basically. And you need to die to self and, and follow Christ. So there's... I'm just... I know this is rough, but that sometimes that's a hard word that's necessary. And that's what he told all those 70 people that left him. He said, I gave you a hard word and you all, all left? Are you, all, are you leaving too? And they said, no, Lord. Who should we follow? You know? Yeah. I do think as well, though, that, you know, the text doesn't say anything, but I feel like if they're going to go see on a woman, it's all adults. You know? It's what? All adults. Oh. You know? And I just... Like, the fact that they're going to go see on a woman, it's all adults. You know? And I just... Like, the fact that they're going to go see on a woman, it's all adults. You know? And I just... Like, the fact that they're going to go
farmer's market is a place that a lot of families come to. And, with and I was also talking with them, you know, like, I think this is what I think that parents need to talk to their children. They would stone the women in front of children. They would do that to teach them. You're not going to commit these crimes when you grow up. Do you know what I mean? They took them away from the town to kill them so that they wouldn't be dead bodies. No, they put them in this public square. And the men would be probably the ones throwing the stones, but there would be whole people gathered around. Some mourning, some crying, some pleading for her life, probably, and other ones probably like stone or stone, or, you know? They hung the, the criminals on the cross to, for all to see. That's true. For all, even the babies. Oh, I'm not going to commit that crime when I get big. I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? That's what it says. Rebuke people. Rebuke in public so that all should fear. That's that's the reason why you do a public rebuke. For like, let's say you talk to your brother. Is that from? Anybody wants to see Bible? Who's excited? Trying to think where that's from. I feel like that sounds like Paul. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Do you just cut Paul? Do you just cut? Oh, okay. I, okay. I was just saying, because he's saying that to the church, where uh -huh. he says rebuke the person. So, like, within the body of uh -huh. right. inside the church, rebuke them within the church. Right. Right. But that's the same thing with, if you raise up children and you have an older kid, you don't take the older kid and say, hey, you just broke our rules here. I'm going to take you over here and punish you. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to do it in front of your brother and sister. So they see and they don't do the same thing. You see what I'm saying? It's not like, uh, you know, I'm going to say, hey, you're, this is your punishment. This is what you're going to, you're going to have to wash the dishes. You're going to have to do this. You're going to do this. And they're going to watch you do it. They're not going to do any chores. You're going to do their chores because they've been good. You know what I mean? It ain't going to happen again, or those kids are going to do it because they don't want to be the one to do all that, right? In their mind, that's what they're thinking. You know, uh, it's not the end of the world to have to do dishes, but to a kid it is, right? So I'm just saying that it's, you've got to, the only way you can change a society is by righteousness overcoming sin, right? Right now sin is running rampant and righteousness is hiding in the closet.